Welcome to our 16th tutorial on Erlang. Today we're going to continue our topic on distributed programming. We're going to focus today's tutorial on GenServer. GenServer is a great way to create a simple server. It's a behavioral module for implementing the server of a client-server relationship. So let's get started. Today I'm using IntelliJ, I'm just experimenting with different ID. First thing we do is we want to create the server logic. So new Erlang file and empty module. We call this the name of the name of our module will be factorial. So and then what we want next is the gen server so and then we also want the client so so if we go to the logic we're going to write a quick code on factorial calculation. In the factorial logic, we have the first section which doesn't require an handler. The second part of factorial logic is the factorial handler. This area is useful if you want to send a message to the factorial logic. It's just I'm going to use it as an example which we'll talk about later on. So after writing the factorial logic, now we want to write the factorial server. The first thing we want to do is declare the name of the module. So we have module and the name of our module will be the factorial server. If you're using IntelliJ um, and you're using the Erlang plugin, it basically generates a server for you. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to write one from scratch. The next thing we want to, we want to do is to declare the behavior, the module behavior. Jeez. And the behavior we want is a gen server behavior. As you can see, the top module here is giving us some undefined callback functions, which is which are init, handle call, handle cast, handle info terminate and code change for the purpose of this tutorial i'm just going to copy and paste this so here are the callback functions connected to the gen server and i'm just going to give a quick description of each one so by default when the factorial server is initialized the any function is always called the reason for this line, line 9, process flag, is to set a trap exit. The trap exit ensures that the supervisor receives not notification if this server goes down. But we're going to talk about the supervisor in the next tutorial. The next call is the handle call function. The handle call is a synchronized function. It's basically going to call the factorial logic and it's going to wait for reply. This is crucial because it's going to actually wait. So if your factorial logic function takes ages, basically the server is actually going to wait till it receives a reply. We can fix that by putting a timeout here. And once the timeout of 2000 milliseconds is up, the terminate the handle information kicks in. The handle info co is called by the gen server when a timeout occurs. So we go back to the handle cast. Just remove this. The handle cast is asynchronous and in general is not for returning values. And like I said earlier, the handle info is called by the gen server whenever a timeout occurs. And we also have the terminate. Basically, it's called when you terminate the server. 
the final function is the code change. So whenever your code changes, the server calls the code change function. Now that we have the callback functions, now what we want is to create the client call functions. We now have the client call functions. Basically, these are the, the functions the client can send to the server. For the purpose of this tutorial, we have the start link and the stop, just for the purpose of this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to remove them and make sure the supervisor is the one that starts the link. Then we have the two factorial calls, which the client requests and then the server sends or payload to the callback function which gets a which calls the logic and then sends a reply back so what we have to do now is inside the handle call we want to create a another handle call which is going to handle the factorial calls we want to use pattern matching for the handle call to receive a factorial call factorial, and it's going to also come with a value and we want the handle call to call the factorial logic logic factorial and we want to send a value and an accumulator which is one now what we have here is the factorial that the client can see which connects to the gen server and the call which comes here we have a and call with factorial and value topple which then calls the factorial logic fact factorial logic and waits for a reply and now we're going to create a second one for the factorial recorder so we're just gonna copy and paste this and unlike the first one the second one takes in an extra argument of IO device and we're going to call factorial logic factorial sending the value the accumulator and the IO device so this is then connected to this the final thing we have to do now is to export the first export we have is the client interface grouping basically what the client can see and that is the start link the factorial the first one the stop that takes in zero and the factorial which takes in two arguments we also have the second export which is for the gen server into module exports um, which contains the init function the handle calls the terminate and the code change functions now after having this we now have to write the factorial client functions. So after writing the factorial client, we have the start, which calls the factorial server start link function. We have the stop, which calls the factorial server stop. We have the factorial, which calls the factorial server factorial with one argument. And we have the factorial recorder, which calls the second argument and take that takes in the value and the IO device. After this, we just have to build our project and hopefully everything goes perfect. Everything is perfect. Now we want to run. First thing we do is edit the configuration if you're using IntelliJ. And we want to change the SDK to the client server. And that's it pretty much, apply okay now we just run it as you can see with IntelliJ it adds the part to your code now to run this we simply call the factorial client and we call this stat function 
function. So local factory server starting. I think it's okay. And now we call factorial of 34. So that's it. And then we can call factorial client stop. Then it, it stop. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial today. Next time we're going to talk about the supervisor. The supervisor supervises the server. So when the server crashes or goes down, the supervisor basically reloads it. And this is when the process flag trap exit comes into play.